Hi everybody and welcome to Lockdown Lessons Part 26 and with me today I've got Paulina Tenner from Grantree. So firstly I just wanted to say hello to you Paulina. Uh, hello Phil. Hi, how are you? Okay? I'm really good, thank you. No problem at all. So yeah, for, for those of for those of the people that are actually watching this that don't know who you are and what you do, perhaps you could just fill us in and, and give us a bit more information about yourself and Grantree. Of course, so I, I wear two hats. I'm a seed investor in tech startups, but I'm also a founder of Grand Tree, a company I started 10 years ago, now over 50 people. We get government funding in terms of research and development grants and research and development tax credits for tech startups, scale-ups, and sometimes bigger companies as well. So that's our specialty. And we raised over 200 million sterling worth of government funding for our clients, actually. Wow, and, and over what period of time was that? That's over 10 years. 10 years, fantastic. That's amazing. Um, so, okay, so if we can part, cast, excuse me, if we can cast our mind back to March the 23rd of last year, yes. um, at what point did you think there might be a problem either commercially, either for yourselves or for your clients? I was wondering, will people actually be um, aware of funding needs they have? Will they be kind of focused on more immediate wins other than claiming their grants? And that was it was a little bit worrying but actually it didn't turn out bad it seems that businesses are actually more than ever interested in in tapping into additional sources of funding so that's good for us yeah i think where, where needs must and everything if you're if you're in a position whereby you know you're, you're a bit concerned you've taken a bit of a hit due to covid that's the time to absolutely look at not only just things like cutting cutting overhead but also looking at grants and, and the availability of government money why wouldn't you it's a, it would be crazy not to so so how did you have to adapt um following the, the, the period we went into lockdown as a business what did you have to do differently to be able to react to the new world we live in paulina of course so we needed to uh reduce our person face-to-face -face meetings we used to like to do that and some of our clients do like to do that for us to get to know each other better especially if we are to in depth, get an in-depth understanding of a business's technology and their technological advances. Sometimes it's actually useful to meet in person. So it was good. Um, yeah, it, it was good that we had all the setup required to uh, firstly work remotely and secondly to meet our clients online. So uh, we were quite used to it with some clients who are super busy and don't quite have time to, to meet with us. So, so we needed to adapt um, to the lockdown in terms of working remotely, seeing our clients remotely, um, kind of maintaining our culture, even though we are all distributed. So that was a bit of a challenge, but I think we've done relatively well. Good stuff. So so what wins would you say you've seen since since uh, March the 23rd of last year? What wins have you seen for Grant Tree? Sure. So uh, on, the, on the grant tree side of things, um, I think we've done pretty well, we've adapted pretty well. Uh, we've kind of launched some wellness initiatives in the workplace to make sure that people are well looked after um, because people who are looked after deliver good results. And secondly, on the personal side of things, I'm actually launching a book this summer uh, called Laid Bare, What the Business Leader Learned from the Stripper. I used to be a burlesque dancer, by the way. <laughs> so, so I'm kind of talking about the lessons that my business persona learned from my performance artist. Uh, and that's going quite well. I'm um, kind of embarking on a bit of a publicity campaign at the moment and really excited about it. So things are going well, both on Grand Tree front and on my personal branding front. Amazing. So when, when's the book going to be published? in the summer of this year most most likely july fantastic oh that's amazing is that your first book you've written by the way it is my first book yeah so yeah that's <laughs> me, yeah cool. it's a, how much how much how much time so when when you actually first started writing it how long did it take you to complete it the first draft it took me around three months believe it or not it really just poured out of me uh but it then took time to refine it to really kind of reposition it who is this book for Who's going to read it? Why? Uh, what should it include? What should I been? So then it's, it was a whole process of editing and re-editing it that took much longer, actually. 
I bet it did. Yeah, I mean, I can I can imagine. I think that I think the most important thing when you when you're looking to achieve a longer term project is just to set the date when you want it to finish, and then just work back from that. Because otherwise, it's an it's one of these non important jobs. There's no real urgency, is there? And, and often when there's no urgency in a job, things never actually happen. But but well done on actually making it happen. Anyway, so that, that's absolutely brilliant. So so what changes would you say that you've made within Grant Tree? Um, that that you've had to make during during because of lockdown due to lockdown that you're going to continue with after we're allowed out doing what the hell we like of course so we're not yet sure whether we're actually returned to a physical office we've definitely gotten much better at kind of maintaining our culture and cheering each other on while working remotely so we're quite good at that so we may not return to a physical office we haven't decided yet we may have a kind of set up the co-working space where people can choose on any given day whether to work from home or work from the office. Um, and some practices that we've adapt, adopted, so some wellness practices, some kind of support structures we introduced for employees, for team members to feel better and feel well looked after, I think those are definitely going to stay. That's great. I mean, so is there anything that you would have, um, I, um, I suppose, I suppose a better question would be, what have you learned most about yourself during this time in, in the last year or so? I learned that self-care is absolutely critical and that can mean several things. It doesn't have to mean a bath with candles, you know. It <laughs> can mean, for example, getting up early four, four times a week to do my personal training, which I do. Obviously, during lockdown, it's been on Zoom, but still I've got my weights at home. I really kind of tend to look after my body because healthy body is a healthy mind great so healthcare is up healthcare and self-care is up, absolutely key for me i also work learned that it's, it really helps to have a structure so to have goals that you accomplish during the day that you have things every day i try to do something that makes me feel a little bit proud of myself sometimes it can be something insignificant but uh, still I try to complete a, 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 at least one task that makes me feel good about myself every day. Um, and also the importance of my support network. So uh, not just goals and tasks and being kind of uh, happy with what I, what I accomplish, but actually connecting with people as much as I can, obviously remotely. Um, I live with my husband, so I'm really blessed that I'm not on my own. But friends, business connections. Um, I've spent quite a lot of time actually on social media connecting with people, including Clubhouse, the new, um, the new medium, uh, where I met plenty of very interesting business connections and some of them have already become my friends. So yeah, um, that's what I learned about myself. Support network is key. A lot, yeah. I, th I think the words um social distancing came in in sort of April May last year and actually someone pointed out to me they said well actually it should be called physical distancing because actually if there's one thing we shouldn't be doing at the moment is social distancing physical distancing yes but not social distancing because Absolutely. that's going to make us feel more isolated and that's that's not going to be that, that's going to be damaging to our mental health without a doubt isn't it exactly exactly so really well, all, all, all I would say to those watching is surround yourself with people who understand you, who relate to you, who um, you can afford to be vulnerable with. Super, super important. Absolutely. I totally agree. So final two questions for you, Paulina. So um, for anyone that's watching this at the moment, what type of businesses and what type of people are would you like to meet at the moment? Do you think that you could help through Grantree or, or personally? Sure. So I would like to meet uh, people who are well connected in the technology space um, and also founder, founders of tech businesses. Uh, very happy to arrange a free consultation in terms of what government funding you're eligible for with somebody from my team. Um, and I would also like to meet people that might be happy to in interview me on the podcast, for example, about the upcoming book. Wonderful. That sounds great. Um, so, so what type of person would you like to interview on your podcast? Just to be clear, well, that, I would like to be interviewed on other people's podcasts. Sorry, oh, sorry, yeah. I do apologise. I do. No, apologize. that's okay. That's absolutely <laughs> fine. However, I also have an upcoming um, online summit called the Great Fuck Up Summit, which is all about uh, 
well-known entrepreneurs giving us lessons based on their failures. So I'm also looking to, to meet with well-established successful founders who really enjoy talking about things that didn't necessarily go well and what they learned about it. So both ways, interested sounds, in podcasts, but also interested to interview people for my online show. That's amazing. I think that's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that some of the contacts that will be actually watching this will actually, that this will resonate with. And I, and I think I'm sure that they will, they, they need to connect with you to find out more about yourself, what you do, what Grant Tree do, and hopefully you can work together at some point. So for now, um, the final question is, if they want to get in contact with you, I will be putting their details below in the comments box, but um, how best can they reach you, Paulina? Oh, so through LinkedIn, it's very, very good. Uh, also, pretty much through any social media. I'm at Paulina Tenner on both Instagram and Twitter. My email address, paulina at grandtree.co.uk or just shoot me a message on LinkedIn. Wonderful. Well, for now, thanks so much, Paulina. Really interesting speaking to you again. And um, yeah, catch up soon. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Phil. Really grateful. No problem. Thank you, Paulina. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.